everyone. I'm Hilary and I wanted to show you some of the really lovely things we've been making in the first month of the jelly printing course. It's a year long course um, and we started in October so we've just come to the end of our first month and in the first month we've been focusing very much on the basics. Um, it's a course which is suitable for those who've never touched a jelly plate in their life before and in fact maybe don't even know what one is right through to those that have had a jelly plate for a while and used it but i'll almost guarantee that you haven't actually used it to its full potential yet so we started with the basics um which are always valuable for everybody to go back through and you get different things you know if you're more experienced um the questions that you have to answer while you're working are different questions so you will get different um end results so we started simple with textures and use things that you can find around the house um we're all feeling a cost of living crisis an energy crisis a world crisis a parliamentary crisis just crises all over the place so using things that are readily available seemed like a good idea so we've hunted around the house for textured objects that we can whack onto a jelly plate and get some really interesting prints from we also looked at making some homemade stamps also using items that you can just find around your house you know rummage in the everything goes in here draw get into the toolbox even into the pantry we made some fabulous stamps with linguine and um a spaghetti two of my new favorite stamps um and we also had a look at um the various properties of paint that we can use on the jelly plate uh, comparing particularly um transparent paint with opaque paint and the ranges in between because that's a very important thing to understand when you are printing in layers which is what we've been doing on our jelly plate so we've done a lot of learning this month um, and really got ourselves well warmed up on the jelly plate but we've also been making things I decided that um, rather than wait till the end of the year what we would do is each month as we tackle a different approach and different techniques on the jelly plate we will make some projects or a project depending on sizes um, with the papers we've made so we've done that as well and i wanted to show you um what we've been making um one of the um things we did was we collaged a lot of our papers onto onto larger sheets of papers like like this um where i put down a lot of pieces of paper together there should be another one like that but i don't quite know what i've done with it but you know never mind such such is well such is my life anyway it'll be it'll be around drying somewhere um so you get these lovely sheets like this and then we looked at using those to create we've made some nice little homemade books like these um which give you fairly random um, but really beautiful. I mean, look at that crop. Isn't that a gorgeous composition? Um, crops from the collages of, of jelly prints. Um, and these are beautiful. These are really, really nice, you know, and we've talked about while we've been working, we've talked about the important properties of contrast. Um, both in colour and in values and also coming alongside contrast is repetition and balance um, which can sound like they kind of um, argue with each other but um, what we need to do as artists is make them work together so I absolutely adore that little book that was the first one I made um, down to some sinister um, goings on online and in technology that video decided to completely bodge itself up so I made another one you know as you do I just had to do it um, I took it on the chin and just enjoyed myself making another book and I've got another collection this is a slightly different size this one of beautiful um collages and I mean I find these incredibly inspirational to look at you know I look at something like that and I just see gorgeous gorgeous um compositions i'm just looking at the back of this one i mean that's a gorgeous composition isn't it? it's on the back of this one um so i find these very inspirational um little books to have i tend to have my books like this in the sitting room so that when i'm sitting in the evening you know if we have to sit through some adverts which i can't stand um i just i pick up one of these and i just look through and i think this that one i like that way up and then i think it's absolutely gorgeous these have got some script written in them as well which is another thing i like to do um, in collages is add some script in um, you can't read what it is but it is actually the words of the desiderata so it's, is that the same page no but look another really long striking page i'm absolutely loving that 
No, that's not it. Where was it? There. That. Another gorgeous stripy composition. This one's nice too, look. Sort of landscapey. Um, you'll get masses of inspiration out of little books like these and they are really beautiful things you know this is just made out of cheap materials and yet it's very firm it's got a nice little cover you know this would make a beautiful gift for somebody wouldn't it in fact quite a few of the things i've made would make nice gifts for people i had we then looked at cropping out from the um from our sheets to find compositions that we found um, particularly pleasing. And I've put a couple into frames. Um, you know, I still can't decide with this which way. I I'm not keen that way. I do like that way though. I think that's my favorite. That's, that's the way I've actually put it. Um, but you know, it could go, no, not that way. It, not for me anyway. It could go a few ways, but I think that's, sorry, we've got light shining on the frame, obviously just framed in a very simple little white frame. Um, and this one, which is a slightly bigger one, which I put into a black frame with black mount. Um, and again, it's a simple composition, but I really, really like it that, oh no, yes. Okay, it will go that way as well. I like it that way too. Um, again, these would make lovely gifts for people, wouldn't they? Um, you know, simply made, but you can, you know, we, we talk about how to find areas that make interesting compositions. What are you looking for? Look, what, you know, using the rules of design, what are you actually looking for in terms of balance and symmetry um, to find an interesting composition? So we did those, and then we also cut out a lot of these little crops. These are my leftover ones. Um, I think you can see straight away one use for these would definitely be um, bookmarks, wouldn't it? And if you make cards or anything like that, these are fantastic for that. I use some of mine to make this book, um, which is just a cheap um, Sea White sketchbook, which I've covered in jelly prints. Um, and it's all got, it's got nice wax on the cover of it, so it's nice and protected. And then I've again, I've gone in with um, Max Zimmerman's Desiderata, um, a piece of prose I absolutely love. And I've just been adding in, really, this book was to showcase some of my crops so that they would be there as inspiration for me. But I wanted to add that script in. It's in the background of a lot of the, a lot of the prints because I've written it on my things. And this just gives me an opportunity to play with those cropped images that I've taken, these, the, these, these little devils, and create um, lovely pages with them. And I'm really, really pleased with this. And each page has um, successively parts of the desiderata on it. I think, just looking at this, I think I definitely need something in here, um, you know, so I can find something just looking there. You see that little fella? That might just do it, mightn't it? That probably would just do it. That goes very nicely in there. I'll leave that tucked in. Um, but I've just gone through, added the script. Very, very simple. Didn't take me a very long time. Haven't put masses of thought in, but fantastic practice um, for composition. Plus this book, again, is heaving with um, composition designs, all abstract for me. Um, when I feel, you know, lacking in inspiration. Um, and abstract isn't something I do um, naturally. I tend to work with, um, it may be semi-abstracted, but some sort of figurative aspect to my work. So this is quite interesting for me to have this. I love this one. I love this collage here with that strip of the, it's where I took some black paper out of a sketchbook because um, I didn't have any. Um, and I think these are lovely. I think this is just, again, this would be a beautiful gift for somebody. Really nice coffee table book to sit and look through. And I can just pick it up and remember, you know, some of my favourite quotes um, from the Desiderata. I'm just seeing this one here. Do not distress yourself with imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. You know, it, it's so full of wisdom. It's so full of wisdom, this piece of prose. Um, so sitting and reading it and looking at these beautiful images and collages is going to make me a very, very happy person. I love this end bit with all its shams, drudgery and broken dreams. It is still a beautiful world. Strive to be happy. I mean, oh, oh it's got tingles going down my spine. And then with the few bits. Oh, yes. And we made and these are for the next session. Actually, um, we created we got started on the next session. I've made some envelopes um, for next time which we're going to be using for a project in our next sessions 
And then I used up what I had left, because I thought, right, let's get them used. And I've used up all the other papers to make these composite sheets um, where I've put colours that go together. So rather than making a collage with lots of difference, I've put collage that, collages where the colours go together. And I've made these just on, these are some of the um, sheets from my student exhibition where I, ha I had to have loads of lists of work um, for when we were doing the hanging. Um, so I've made myself colour composition sheets. Um, these ones I've done on deli paper, so they're even thinner. What I wanted was something that wasn't as thick as, you know, the ones I've done on card are quite substantial. Well, you know they would make a good bookmark um they frame really nicely these ones um are more ones that i could use they're quite soft still to use either in other collages for book covers for anything i want really um and i really really like these this one's got a few more colors on this one i absolutely love um it's got ooh, which way do i want that do i want them oh i like that that's like a mountain with um, a bridge going across the top, isn't it? Fantastic. Um, so I've got some real, real, um, oh, I love that. That's going to make some nice, some really nice props for me is that one. Um, this was using up my pinks, blues, purples and blacks and another one. And I was loving the way I was getting these black edges. That's beautiful. And a green and a greeny one. So, oh, and this one. That was using up just everything left. So it's a bit wild, that one, but I still like it. So I've got a big stash of these composite sheets. I've still got a bit of card left um, if I wanted to use that for anything to do with books. A few props left um, that I may well make into bookmarks, actually. They gain nice little extra presents to go to. You may, you may find some of these appearing, actually, in um, if you order any books from the shop. Maybe I'll stick a bookmark in. Things for the next session, two of these little composition type books, my lovely book of Max Eilman's Desiderata and a couple of framed prints. Now, that is pretty good, isn't it, for a month's learning and it hasn't taken, it hasn't taken me hours to do those at all, those are simple techniques. So next month we're going on to looking at using stamps on the jelly plate, so we'll be looking at ways of making stamps. Um, so we'll be making foam stamps and we'll be making lino cuts and we'll be using erasers and we'll be using cardboard and mount board. Um, and these things, which are the backgrounds of um, from uh, board games. So we'll be making stamps and we'll be looking at ways of using those on the jelly plate and also looking at more at opacity and transparency and introducing Procyon dye into our mix. So... It's a fabulous course. Um, I hope the people on it are really, really enjoying it. I wanted to show you what we're doing and I also wanted to tell you, there's always a, there's an also, isn't there? Um, I am running it again, as a few people have asked me. It's too late to join this one. We've done too much. I know we've only been going for a short time, but I think um, just experience is telling me people coming in with, with catch-up to do never get the catch-up done. Um, and then they, they don't enjoy the rest of the course. So I'm going to start another one. Um, I was going to start it mid next year, but I'm going to start it in January. So that those people who, who missed out, I know that I'm not very good at advertising. So if you missed out last time, didn't realise it was there, um, you can come and join up. It's actually, it's a big course. Um, it, I'm covering a lot in it. Um, it's not just the jelly printing. There is a lot of jelly printing. Obviously, that is my main focus. But we're also covering a lot of different projects that you can make with papers and fabrics. And we're covering techniques like making stamps. We'll be making stencils, making homemade stamps, making texture blocks. We'll be looking at rubbings and collar graphs um, and quite a lot of other stuff. So it's a big course. I think you would really enjoy it. I think it could make a very happy 2023, which I think we all need, don't we? So I am going to um, hope I see some of you there. And if I don't, that's fine. Um, I hope you've enjoyed looking at what we've been doing. Okay. Bye for now. Bye.